and uh, I was pacing back and forth at the train station. I was like, I'm done. The way I was just spoken to, even though it wasn't my fault, I can't keep taking this. Like, uh, I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And they- That's they, brave even to say that yeah. to your agent who's like, you know, you they want you to have confidence and have passion for this. I don't think they cared because they weren't <laughs> really? like super high up. They were mainly commercial agent and they really booked a lot of at, like commercials. So it, it wasn't like I was with United or someone who, you know, <laughs> they, they were kind of like, oh, all right. Like it wasn't like a big deal. Oh, I was having a breakdown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and they knew I'd come back or something. I don't know. Maybe we all do it <laughs> at some point. Back. Yeah. 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 So they were like, well, you know, hold that thought, take the weekend. I'm sorry that you had a bad time. In the meantime, we have just got an audition for you for a pilot for Rob Thomas. It's called I Zombie. And this was, happened at the same time. You at the were same train station. Acting. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And it, they said I zombie, and I was like, "Sounds shit." Um, <laughs> it sounds like sounds shit. terrible. What does it mean? Yeah, is it a fucking app? What is this right. like? And and they were like, "It's a comic book. It's a pilot for the CW." I was like, "Okay, cool, whatever." And they sent the sides, and I looked at it, and I attacked it in a way I wouldn't have attacked it that weekend. I attacked it in a point to prove way that I was capable. I've had this, but it's it's a rare thing when you just, you're sort of like, fuck it. Yeah. Rarely do we ever say, fuck it. We care too much. We need it. We've got to get the role. We, the stakes are high. We need yeah. to make money. We need to impress people and prove ourselves. And, and you were at a position where you were like, I'm going to fucking quit anyway. And then I got this. And you know what? Fuck it. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. You had this for certain mentality or, or your energy was yeah. just what do i have to lose exactly there was no stakes anymore and this was a really I, i've said this before in um, in something but it's a really good note for other actors about their auditions if they're watching i couldn't wait to perform it and i hadn't felt like that in a long time wow like show and tell usually you're afraid of it yeah and i you're was like i it. can't wait to fucking monday what time two o'clock can't wait <sighs> Because I knew it was good, and I knew I put work into it, and I get to the audition. I remember the character brief. It said highly caffeinated. That was the character brief. This character is Scotty. He's a highly caffeinated uh, medical examiner. Scotty. Scotty from Star Trek. Ah, he's ah. that. He's that kind of like he's the brains, and he's uh, a little yeah, bit yeah, bigger yeah, than gotcha, life, gotcha. and all of this stuff. So I get it. I get it ready. I get up on its feet. I remember like showing it to my family and stuff like that and they they liked it i'd never done that on the train ride to like central london i started to doubt myself and i was like audition's too big you're too big you're too caffeinated dial it back <laughs> and by the time i've walked to the front door of the audition uh the casting director's place i've talked myself out of doing it what you as wanted big, to do yeah as big and fast as i could do it so I started to dial it back. And this is the, the best thing that's ever happened to me in my entire fucking life, where my career is concerned. The room I sat in, I chose a seat randomly. I sat here and the casting director's assistant's computer was there, okay? And everyone was in the room and we we're all sitting there and it was every brown dude from England. We all looked <laughs> the same and we we're all sitting there. And I could see on her screen, she was cutting together other tapes and I could see multiple tapes and they were playing people that she liked I or guess. she was just or cutting, was together, just cutting together the auditions right and none of them even though i couldn't hear audio none of them were moving and i was like oh shit none of them are highly caffeinated no one's got any big energy everyone's brought it down you could see from their energy during their tape they're like this and they're just and you're like everybody's doing this. everyone's doing it so i went Fuck that, go back, do do what you could do. Do it fast, it doesn't matter if you trip up, do it. So being able to see a computer, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do what's on Wait, wait, so this computer saved you? Yeah. Like Just seeing where I sat, this. Yeah, because I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have, I talked myself out of it. I was like, it's too big, you're going wow. too fast. It's not, it's not right. And I could see the screen. And then like I said, I could see everyone else's energy without even hearing the dialogue was wrong. I go in the room, name, Roll Coley, cool, age, da -da, slate, sit down. Bang, I hit it the minute it starts. And, I, and I, I didn't trip and I got through the two pages of this, this fucking dialogue. I remember the casting director sat back and she went, 
have you auditioned for me before? And I was like, I don't know, maybe. She was like, how long have you been doing this for? I was like, eight years. And she was like, where have you been? And I remember her saying that. And then I felt this like adrenaline rush. And I was like, oh shit. Okay. She likes me. She likes me. She goes, do you have a green card? Oh, like, are your passport valid and everything? So your heart starts pounding. And I was like, uh, yeah, I do. She was like, wow, okay, cool. Uh, well, thank you so much. We'll speak to you later. 